Welcome again now for the press conference of uh, Roberto Martinez, coach of uh, Belgium's national team, the Red Devils. Please raise your hands to ask a question to Roberto Martinez. First, Ludo van der Wallen from Het Nieuwsblad. Ludo. Hi, Roberto. Hi, Ludo. Hi, Roberto. Okay, what's the news of Kevin and Aiden? That's the most important thing, I think. Well, as, as you know, they didn't, they didn't join the group this morning. They couldn't train with the group just yet, but probably that's something that we expected. It's been another 24 hours, another 24 hours that they've been positive towards their recovery, but we all know that we are fighting against the time. We, we, we're going to take until the last minute to make the decision every day that we go by every time that they can sleep and get three meals and get some treatment we see an improvement and then we'll see tomorrow if, we, if they can be involved or not unfortunately um, at the moment we cannot make a decision it's not playing any games not to make the opponent any wiser or, or anything no no um, i think the approach is to try to get the players fit and we are in a tournament uh, tournament mode. That means that if if they cannot play tomorrow, by being with the team and by working with us, they are here in Munich. We're going to try to get them fit as quick as we can, and we need to work in that way. That's not being arrogant. That's just trying to see if we can get them fit for the next few games. Obviously, it'll be difficult for tomorrow. I think obviously a soft tissue injury, maybe in in Eden's case, maybe it's difficult for a game like tomorrow and, and, and for Kevin is a little bit different having a, a ligament uh, problem maybe is a bit different but uh, it's more a medical decision at the moment it's not a football decision tomorrow will become a medical decision in, in the afternoon and then we'll make a football decision after that OK, Ludo, thank, thank you Thank you Yves Telleman Um, coach, uh, the FA Cup final in 2013 uh, was uh, against uh, Manchester City with Wigan with Roberto Marcini. Is that maybe, <clears throat> sorry, one of the most sensational victories of your young coaching career? Well, of course, yeah. And uh, I think is is the if you it's just if you put the final into context, uh, you're talking about the England champions against probably the underdogs, and it was a story just to see in the FA Cup, the most famous cup competition in European football, to have a, a, a small team arriving to the final was was the the success. Now to win it, I don't think anyone expected that, and I think it just gives you the magic of the FA Cup in the British game, and it's been since then a story that. It's been always been stimulating and, and, and inspiring for other clubs to try to reach the FA Cup final. Obviously, it was very special for Wigan Athletic and everyone connected, but that that's, it shows you that over 90 minutes in a cup, anything could happen. And I think we are in the same position. Tournament football, we've seen some big surprises already, and that's more than, more than football is, is the case. But I'm sure I've spoken with Yuri Tillemans, and he told me about his feelings of, by winning the FA Cup final, so I hope... He can carry on in that way tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, can the one Robert yeah, can the one Roberto still surprise the other one? Or do you don't you have surprises for each other anymore? Well, I think obviously you're seeing the two best teams statistically in this competition. Um, this is a very different game in that respect. Obviously, two teams that they won fourteen games from qualification and group phase, that's a record. I think it's only Germany that they did that in the previous years. So it's, I think it's a shame that we have to face each other uh, in quarterfinals. I think it's a game, again, we had to face Portugal really early. We have to face Italy. I really think it's a shame for both national teams that we face each other at this stage. But I think it's the quality of this tournament and we need to be ready for it. So not a lot of secrets, just statistically two very good teams that they look like club teams, the way they play with a lot of synchronization. And tomorrow's game is going to go to very small details. Thanks, Yves. Thanks, good luck. Marco Conterio, Tutto Sport Web. Hello. Hello, Mr. Martinez. Uh, my question, uh, okay, you already answered on uh, the Bruyne Hazard, which is our main question in Italy. Uh, is there any, uh, any single player that you will try to 
get uh, away from uh, from Italy, the most dangerous one, maybe. I think obviously we had we have huge respect for every single player that he makes this team such a strong team. I think it's fair to say that the Italian side is is made of of fantastic individuals, but they they make a, a, an incredible unselfish role and he makes this team so strong. They all press with a lot of energy, very dynamic, a lot of numbers on the counter-attacks. They defend really, really well as a unit. So if I was going to highlight uh, an individual quality, it would be the way that a national team can play so well and so synchronized. And I think that's down to the coach. I think what Roberto Mancini has done with his team, that's the reason why they've been undefeated for 31 games. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one more. Is is Italy so the the less Italian uh, squad that uh, you've ever seen? I don't know. I think obviously modern football changes a lot. I think the the, the modern football makes you be very flexible. So I wouldn't say obviously I'm not an expert to to talk in that way from Italian perspective. But what I do feel that this team has kept all the real resolute and winning aspects that Italy always have in tournaments and then he's added this modern flexible aspect of of being able to be a dynamic team that he can defend very quickly very high and quite happy to be in one v one situations all over the park so I think it's a combination um, and I think in football you need to be uh, adaptable you need to be flexible without losing your DNA and I don't think this Italian side has lost the DNA of the, Ital of the good Italian uh, national teams. Thank you. Christophe Lieberlo, Belang van Limburg. Christophe. Um, my question is, Roberto, could you emphasize, please, in one word, what's the biggest difference between Italy and Belgium? And the second question, what would you really like to see from your own team tomorrow? What's the most important you would like to see tomorrow? Well, it's, it's difficult. I think we are um, very different because obviously we are made of very, of very different individuals and different players. We've been together. I think the biggest difference would be if you want that Italy, they've been building up towards this tournament and they're growing together and they've becoming uh, resolute and really strong after uh, not accumulating defeats for 31. We are different. I think we've been growing through being in Russia 2018 together. I think the emotions and having to beat teams like Brazil and having to overcome difficulty of being 2 nil down against Japan and having to adapt to different styles. I think we've been through a longer journey and probably the experience of these players uh, allows you to, to do that. And I would say that what I want to see tomorrow is I want to see our players enjoying all the hard work that they put in in the last five years. The, the, the work is to be in games like uh, tomorrow. They need to enjoy it, they need to be themselves. And all we need to do is to improve what we did against Portugal. And I think that's a very clear line of, of our approach to the game. Okay, thank you. Okay, Christoph. Bert Maldering, NOS, the Netherlands. Are you still there? No, not for the moment. And we go to Jonas Bernard, Sudpress. Jonas Bernard, Sudpress. Coach, um, I want to know, I guess the relation with Roberto Mancini is, is good. Uh, what do you like from him as a, as a coach in his work and in, in, uh, in his philosophy? Well, I really enjoy tactical coaches and he took the Premier League by storm when he arrived. It was the, the way that he got that mentality of believing that Manchester City could win the league and winning the league in the manner that they did it. I think that's just a pure reflection of Roberto Mancini's work. So from that point of view, I think you can see the way that he likes to work with the team from a psychological point of view, that competitive nature, making a group very, very strong and the priority in that dressing room to all the concepts that we see in this Italian team playing with a very dynamic approach, really strong on the counter. They defend very quickly. They defend very high. They apply pressure. They're very dynamic. And 
And I think that's, uh, uh, that's probably the biggest attribute that Roberto Mancini has as a coach is that, that meticulous approach tactically. And that's something that he's, he's been doing for a long, long time. And you can see clearly in his work in the national team. I know how difficult it is to just to work in, in, in the way that you want to work at a club level into the international football. And I think Roberto Mancini has done it with real ease and with exemplary ways. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. I have another quick question. Yeah, just one question. Uh, can you explain how did you proceed with Roberto Mancini before the Euro to get this list uh, with 26, peop uh, 26 players? Uh, how did you, did you work with, uh, with Italian Federation and also England? Yes, but I think it was just a, a very quick uh, conversation and, and trying to share the views and the worries that we had. And I think you can see now that because of the uncertainty during the tournament with the amount of traveling, the restrictions, the protocols, I think it was a, uh, the right call. Even in our case, you can see the injuries to Simon Mignolet and Timothy Castagne. And now you, every national team is picking injuries. It was expected. Uh, such a demanding season for all the players. When they come to a tournament football, everything gets amplified. And we expected that that rate of injuries would increase probably 20 to 21 percent. And we shared the views that Roberto Mancini and the Italian Federation proposed. And I think then there were all the federations to follow. And it was a, a really quick way to try to help the competition from a coach's uh, point of view. Okay. Merci. Een nieuwe second attempt voor uh, Bert Maaldering, NOS. Bert Maaldering. Ja. Ja, gelukkig. Uh, is Kevin de Bruyne de key to win tomorrow? That's my first question. The second question is, after this press conference, you have a walk through the stadium with the players. Is that very useful? Obviously, Kevin de Bruyne is, in my eyes, is the best playmaker in world football. And then any coach would like to have the best at their positions and in their jobs available. But obviously we need to have players that they are fully fit and we'll find out that tomorrow. Uh, to, today at the moment is very difficult to know because at the moment uh, Eden and Kevin, they follow in individual programs and it will be a medical decision tomorrow. Uh, today at the end we train in Belgium and to be east, we adapted in, into that way and majority of the players uh, know this stadium. Uh, we got a lot of players based in Germany and they know it well. So it's, um, it's only a little walk for the staff. Okay, thank you. Yuri de Lecour, Belga. I presume you, you see the game between uh, Italy and Austria. What did you learn, what did you learn from, from this game? Well, I think is, is this tournament um, sends you a different challenge when you play away from home. I think that's the first thing. I've seen an Italian team playing in Rome with an incredible familiarity and with a, a way of playing that it reminds me uh, how Denmark plays in Copenhagen or how England plays in Wembley. And I think that's uh, a real key of this tournament. National teams playing at home is very different than when you play away from home. But obviously what you see with this Italian team is that they're ready to compete, they're ready to go into the last second, they're very clear in the way they want to play and through difficulties in that second half against Austria they kept doing the right things and they could make changes and players coming in doing exactly the same role. So it's a real clarity and a real synchronization and it's a very, very tight unit. You see a national team that they work like a club level uh, team and I think that's a huge compliment to the coach, the staff and all the players involved. Okay, merci. Dernière question, last question for Valentin Schnork de Le Matin. Valentin Schnork, Le Matin. Hey, um, you, you said before that uh, you need to improve from the game against Portugal. But what did you learn from, the, from this game and uh, how it can be useful for the game of tomorrow? Well, a, a lot. A lot because when you face the European champions, the champions of the Nations League and the quality of, of, of the individuals that we had in front of us, to be able to keep a clean sheet is because we work really well off the ball. I think in the first half we scored a very good goal from open play, we created a real threat and then there are always things that we want to be 
uh, improving. I think that's the nature of the coaches, and we are a little bit of a strange creatures. We're never happy. We won and we qualify, but you want to improve, and that's probably our measurement. But I was delighted with the attitude. I was delighted with how we cope losing important players, and, and that's just the line that we need to carry on in, in, this, in this tournament. Tomorrow we're going to be facing another top team, or probably statistically the best team alongside Belgium in, in this tournament, 14 straight uh, victories, even though the last one was in extra time. But this is a record that only Germany achieved before, so it must be uh, an, a good parameter of the, of the team that we're facing tomorrow. OK, thanks all. Thanks, coach. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Bye-bye.